Do you often find yourself saying yes when you actually want to say no? And do you find yourself making decisions and your actions being dictated more by the fear of disappointing others rather than actually showing up for your own true desires? If so, you're not alone. The weight of people pleasing can be suffocating and exhausting and absolutely trap you in a cycle of prioritizing everybody's needs and constantly putting yourself on the back burner. But what if there's one powerful tool that you could use to overcome people pleasing once and for all, to live a much more authentic life, fulfilling life, and at the same time, maintain the quality of connections you have, perhaps even improve them. Because for once, you actually show up to connect using your authentic self. Well, if this is something you're interested in, we are gonna cover exactly how to break free from chronic habits and patterns of people pleasing today. If you're new to this channel, my name is Thais and I ran a busy, very busy client-based practice for the better part of 10 years. I've now been putting online content out here for the past five years and running online programs. And I'm really excited that you're here today. So first and foremost, what is people-pleasing? Well, people-pleasing is a form of self-abandonment where a person constantly strives to please others, often sacrificing their own needs or desires in the process. Now, we've often been conditioned culturally to see people-pleasing as more exclusively good. You know, if you're the person who's sacrificing, you must be a good or kind person. But there's a lot of evidence to actually indicate the opposite. Because some of the symptoms of people-pleasing include things like chronic resentment for other people in relationships. And often when we don't have boundaries, we, we can only hold in our frustration for so long, feeling violated or feeling like we're self-sacrificing before we eventually push somebody away altogether or even become volatile in our own emotional expression towards somebody because people-pleasing hurts us and we can only take it for so long. But why do people actually people please in the first place? Well, a recent Gallup poll demonstrated that 63% of women and 48% of men report chronically people pleasing others in their lives. So this is not something that just a few people are struggling with. And part of the reason for this is that at a very young age, we actually get survival and approval confused and intertwined. I'll tell you why. When we're children, we go through something called classical conditioning or socialization, which is basically us learning what is good and bad, right and wrong in our world. So we often get grown up or brought up in a system where we are punished for doing things wrong and rewarded for doing things right. But at the time when the system of classical conditioning actually begins, It is a time where we are completely dependent on our caregivers for survival. Literally, without them, we would not survive. We would die. We often are quite aware of this at a young age. We can't necessarily, at four years old, go get a job, put a roof over our head, and pay the bills. So what ends up taking place instead is that we learn, well, I have to get that approval because if I don't get the approval, what if I'm abandoned? And what if then I can't survive? So children all the way from an early age learn that survival and approval are very closely linked for myself. And I better change myself into a form that is worthy of love and acceptance from my caregivers so that I increase my chances at survival. This is a biological adaptation that we make. So we each have these individual reasons based on the way that we were brought up in this system of classical conditioning through the lens that we saw setting boundaries through and taking up space through. If when you said no to something that your parents or caregivers really wanted you to do, you were criticized, you might make that mean I'm not good enough when I people please. If instead you were rejected and shunned, you might make that mean I'm always going to get rejected when I try to show my authentic self. Or perhaps when you said no or tried to enforce a boundary, you felt abandoned. Maybe you were put into timeout for not doing exactly what your parents needed from you. And you make you may make that mean when I set a boundary or express my true self, I'm going to be abandoned or alone. One other really common variation of this is feeling unsafe. If you experience a more critical household 
maybe a, a household that ruled with an iron fist and there was a lot of tough punishment. You might think at a deep level, if I express my truth or I say no or stand up for my truth, I'm going to become literally physically unsafe. So what I want you to try to recognize here is ask yourself what happened in my upbringing if I try to take myself into consideration and speak my truth. What types of negative consequences did I potentially endure? Now let's talk about some of the symptoms of people pleasing. What I want you to be able to do here is score yourself from one to 10 based on how many of the following symptoms you have. Symptom number one, difficulty or fear saying no. Number two, a strong fear of being disliked. Number three, feeling inauthentic or like a chameleon in the vast majority of your relationships. And obviously this is because you're not expressing your true self. Number four, experiencing lower self-esteem. Believe it or not, a lot of people pleasing deeply impacts our self-esteem in a negative way. Number five, a huge fear of disappointing or hurting other people. Number six, experiencing Overgiving in your life, but also struggling to receive from others without fear or guilt. Number seven, a fear of seeming selfish or like a bad person if you take up too much space. Number eight, afraid of conflict if you speak your truth. And number nine, feeling chronically exhausted or overwhelmed. Usually, this is what happens when you have poor boundaries. And number 10, never having time for things that you truly want to do. So if you're seeing yourself throughout this video and realizing these are my patterns, I can understand where a lot of these things came from in childhood. I want us to actually work through an action or set of action steps that we can take through an exercise we're going to do together that can help you break people pleasing once and for all. So step number one is we want to consistently question our fear. So from those fears that we talked about earlier, what often happens in childhood to people, the fear of rejection if you stop people pleasing or being criticized if you stop people pleasing, or the fear that you're going to be abandoned and totally alone or punished and physically unsafe if you stop people pleasing, I want you to question this now because what happened and what you experienced in childhood is not necessarily going to be your entire reality and experience as an adult. So I want you to truly ask yourself, When I had the experience in childhood of feeling, let's say, for example, abandoned, if I didn't people please, or if I said no, can I really know that this will happen to me now in my life? Okay. We may believe it. We may feel it because it comes from an an old program, an old way that we've been conditioned to feel. But I want you to really ask yourself, you know, with specific people in your life, if you truly show your more authentic self, can you 100% know you're going to get punished? or you're going to be abandoned by everybody. And I want you just to start by questioning that. And then number two, I want you to think of one or two small boundaries that you can set with people on a more regular basis. This could be something like saying no to dinner plans once a week, or this could be something like asking to have space and time alone for creative projects or things that you want to be working on for an extra half an hour, two evenings of your week. Or it could be just asking for things back that people borrowed and don't often give back to you. I just want you to think of small, easy things that you can do with people who you feel pretty confident will have a pretty good reaction. And what we're doing here in step two is we're actually doing something called exposure work. And exposure work gets us to essentially expose ourselves to very small, incremental stretches outside of our comfort zone of what's familiar while moving ourselves in the direction of creating a new habit. And as we repeat this over time and feel more comfortable with doing this, this helps us open up and expand out that comfort zone. It's almost like riding a bike feels terrifying at first, but then eventually you get on enough times and you get used to it. And eventually you've exposed yourself to feeling much more confident riding a bicycle. And then step three, I want you to positively reinforce the situation when you do do it. So let's say, for example, it could be something as small as you asking for a stapler back that your coworker borrowed in the workplace. And in that specific experience, you might be absolutely terrified if you're really afraid to ask for your needs or really struggling with chronic people-pleasing. 
So when you do it and you say, oh, hey, can I grab that stapler back from you? Thank you. If you watch your mind trying to go back down the rabbit hole of what's familiar, oh my gosh, they probably think I'm so rude. They think I'm a bad person. They think I'm so selfish. If you watch yourself trying to tell those old stories, I want you to cognitively reframe to try to share a more positive set of thoughts with yourself. Hey, it's okay for me to ask for a stapler back. It's fully normal for me to be able to do that. My coworker and I have a good relationship. This isn't threatening any relationship that we have. So I want you to try to reframe to focus on more positive oriented thoughts so that you do not go back into the same cycle of reinforcing those old behaviors. And if you can really repeat these three steps, questioning that fear, setting those boundaries or taking up space in small increments over time, and then positively reinforcing the situation when you do it, you're actually going to be through repetition and emotion, reconditioning this people pleasing habit. Now, if you're somebody who wants to go deeper into this topic, you can actually check out um, a course we have all about boundaries and chronic people pleasing. And I also just want to let you know, if you're newer here and you're really interested in working with people in some sort of capacity and you're visiting this channel, perhaps for the first time or revisiting, we are actually launching our relationship certification coaching course um, where you can become a certified integrated attachment theory relationship coach um, all in 12 weeks, along with have a whole bunch of business tips and tools to start your own practice. And this new cohort that I'll actually be teaching live so you can come in and we can work together on this um, will have the doors open at the time that you're seeing this video. So if you want to check it out, I'll put a link to that down below, as well as a free link to our boundaries course that you can check out literally for free for a limited time. Thank you for stopping by here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in future videos.